The 1920s were an age of dramatic social political change for the first time. More Americans lived on cities than on farms. The nation's total wealth more than doubled between 1920 and 1929. This economic growth swept many Americans to an influent but unfamiliar consumer society. People from coast to coast brought the same goods, you know, thanks to nationwide advertising and the spread of chain stores, listened to the same music, did, they did the same dances, even used the same slang. But many Americans were uncomfortable to this new urban, sometimes racy mass culture. In fact, for many, even most people in the United States. The, the 1920s brought more conflict than celebration. My name is Troy Hollingsworth. In this video, we will talk about the 1920s. The most familiar symbol of the Roaring Twenties is probably the flapper, a young woman and with bob hair and short skirts who drank and smoked and said what be term on legal like things, in addition to be more sexuality free than previous generations. In reality, most women in the 1920s did none of these things. Do they? M Though many did adopt the fashionable flapper wardrobe, you know, with the hat and the high heels, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But those women who were not flappers gained some unpredicted freedoms. The 19th Amendment to the Constitution had guaranteed the right in 1920 that millions of women worked in white collar jobs as stenographers, for example, and, you know, could afford and participate in a barn going um, consumer economy. The increased availability of birth control devices like the, the thiogram made it possible for women to have fewer children. And new machines and technologies like the, um, like the washing machine and the vacuum cleaner eliminate some of the drudgery of the household work. During the 1920s, many Americans had extra money to spend, and they spent on consumer goods, such as ready-to-wear clothes and home appliances, like electric refrigerators in particular. They brought radios. And the first commercial radio station in the United States was the Pittsburgh K KDKA, and that hit the airwaves in 1920. Three years later, there were more than 500, 500 radio stations in the nation. By the end of the 1920s, they were radios that was more than in 12 million households. People also went into the piece of uh, people also went to the movies. Historians claim that by the end of the decades, three quarters of the American population visited movie theaters every week. But the most important consumer product of the 1920s was the automobile. Low prices such as the, the Model T, it only cost like $260 in 1924, probably even some, probably even $300. And then the generous credit made 
more cars, affordable luxuries. At the beginning of the decade, by, by the end, they were, were practically in the cities in 1929. There was one car on the road for every five Americans. In the meanwhile, the economy of automobiles was born. Businesses like service stations and motels sprang up to meet drivers' needs. Cars also gave young people the freedom to go whatever they pleased to do and what they wa or whatever they wanted. wanted. What many young people wanted to do was dance, like do the, the char dances like the Charleston, the Cakewalk, the Black Bomb, the Flea Hop. Jazz, jazz bands played at that dance halls like the Savoy in New York City and the Aragon in Chicago. Radio stations and the phonograph, which actually blew up. 100 million of them were sold in 1927 alone and carried their tunes to listeners across the nation. Some older people objected to jazz's music. Says vulgarity and depravity of the moral disasters. It supposedly inspired by many of the younger generation loved the freedom and they felt on the dance floor. During the 1920s, some freedoms were expanded while others were curtailed. The 18th Amendment to the Constitution ratified in 1919 had banned the manufacture of the sale of alcohol. And at 12 a.m. on January 16, 1920, the Federal Volstead Act closed every single taverns, bars, and saloons in the United States. And from then on, it was illegal to sell any kind of intoxication beverage with more than 0.5% alcohol. This drove the liquor trade underground now. So people went to normally illegal speake speakeasies instead of ordinary bars, which was controlled by bootleggers, racketeers, and other organized crime figures such as Chicago gangster Al Capone. And Al Capone reportedly had 1,000 gang um, gunmen and half of the Chicago police force on his payroll. To many middle class white Americans, the prohibition was a way to assert some control over the unruly immigrant masses who crowded the nation's cities. For instance, to the so called dries, which is beer, and the beer was well known as the Crazy Brew. And drinking was a symbol of, they all disliked it, disliked about that, uh, about the, um, the modern city. Emulating alcohol, what they would believe to turn back the clock to earlier, more than a comfortable time. I'll talk about the prohibition, all that in detail, in that video. The prohibition was not only the source of social tension during the 1920s. The great migration of African Americans from the southern countryside to northern cities increased volume of black culture, culture, jazz and blues music, for example, and the literary movement known as the Harlem Renaissance discomfort some white Americans. Millions of people in places like Indiana, Illinois joined the joined the Ku Klux Klan in the 1920s. Likewise, in, an, an anti-communist Red Scare in 1919. And 1920 encouraged a widespread nativist or anti-immigrant high hysteria. And this led the passage of an extremely restorative immigration law. The National Organs Act of 1924, which set immigration quotas that excluded some people like Eastern Europeans and Asians in favor of others, and Northern Europeans and people from Great Britain, for example. These conflicts that what one historian has called a cultural civil war between city dwellers and small town residents, Protestants, Catholics, Blacks, and Whites, Heights and advocates of the old fashioned family values are the, perhaps the most important part of the stories of the Roaring Twenties. So that's the history of the 1920s. You know, um, now, uh, most of my videos that I will make is not 100% detailed, so if you want more detailed stuff, the link will be down in the description below. So, 
every time period that I talk about, and if you want them to more in detail, I'll put the link down in the description below. And also, um, if you don't like to read, I would put a documentary down in the description below. I'll put that down there either. Man. Now, I like all kinds of history, you know? I, it's not like any kind of specific part of history that I like. I like all kinds. Especially world and especially fashion history because, you know, I think that's, um, that's, to me, that's interesting. Please don't question me. I think that's interesting. But there's this woman, she talks about 1920s fashion, and her name is Carolina Zabreska. I'm sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, but that's her name, and she talks about fashion history and stuff. And she has this interesting video about um, 1920s fashion, and she sees um, what the costume that they make now is, like, historically inaccurate, I'll say, or something like that. So, I'll put, I'll put a link down in the description below and, and tell me what you think about her, too. So, uh, well, I'll, I'll see you at the next video. Like, comment, subscribe, and take care.